We want to welcome everybody to Liberty Ministries. We're glad that you're here today. Those that are watching online, we thank you for watching. Romans chapter 14, verse 14. I know that I am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. But do not destroy with your food the one whom God or whom Christ died for. Let us pray. Father God, I ask you to anoint me as I speak your word. And Father, anoint the congregation as they hear your word. And Father, let your word take root in our very being. And Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, have you ever noticed that your diet changes as you get older? Yeah. Things you didn't like as a kid, you now like as adults? Yeah. It's not uncommon because, see, when our first foods that we were ever to eat in the garden was fruits and nuts, Adam and Eve walked to the tree and pulled off the tree and ate it for the day. Then after they got kicked out of the garden, they went from fruits and nuts to roots as well. Other plants. Then after the flood, God says, now you can eat meat, fish, and animals. It could be added to your diet. Now I've heard people say, well, I'm going to go on the Daniel diet, or I'm going to go on this diet, or that diet that they've read in the Bible. I want you to understand this. Daniel ate that away because he was a slave and because he wouldn't defile himself with the meat of the kings. So if you want to be a slave, go for it. I want to be free. That's me. Okay? Then you have the Mosaic Law that came along and said you cannot eat of these things. You can eat a splitted hoof, but not round hoof. No horses, but you can eat cow. You eat sheep, you eat goat, but no pigs. You shall not eat any crusty things. Fish without scales you shall not eat. And he gives a whole long list in Leviticus. So the Lord says, now this is the diet that I want my chosen people to eat. And there was reasons for it. Now when Jesus came, and they considered this, Jesus fulfilled the law ate only what was supposed to be and did not drink wine because it was taboo for him, because it was unclean for him. And so he did all these things according to the law. But after he came back, he says, eat what you want, as long as you ask God to bless it. Now, we have proven that you can eat Oreos, only Oreos, and lose weight. It has been proven that if you drink just chocolate shakes, you can lose weight. So it doesn't matter what you eat, you can still lose weight. We got a guy right now eating McDonald's to prove that you can eat McDonald's and lose weight. It's been done before. So it's not about the food that makes us fat. Early 1950s, the average American was thin. Then came the industry of, you need to eat this food because it's healthy for you. And Americans begin to gain weight. And steadily gained weight to this day. Why? Because we have supersized it. We have put all kinds of stuff in it. When you study out the food that we eat during the early 1900s, they ate stuff with borax in it. They would put borax on the meat so it wouldn't change colors toxins and the sauces and everything. It's a whole new scenario when you start looking into that. That's one of my things that I like to dabble in. And, I, and I've tried about every diet plan out there. And I, know, I know what I'm talking about. And every morning I pray, God, help me eat healthy today. And Lord, let me eat the things that are proper. And, and Lord, let me eat the things that I may lose weight. And the Lord hit me up with this this week. As I was studying this and reading this, the Lord says, all things that I have made are unclean or clean. Nothing in itself is unclean. Now, for me, if you know me, you know there are certain things that I cannot eat. My diet now is pretty much the Leviticus law. 
not by choice, by any means. I'm not trying to be holy or spiritual. If I eat it, I get sick. So that's just the end of it. I don't want to get sick, so I just don't eat it. But if you eat it, fine. But if I come to your house, and you know I don't eat pork, and you say, well, pastor, we're having pork today, so here, eat this. That would be offensive. Because you already knew. Now, am I offended? No, I could care less. I don't have to eat it. But God's not talking about me, he's talking about you. So this is where Paul is talking about. If it is unclean to you, it is unclean to you. Not to somebody else. That's to you. And if you eat it, you break the law that you have put up on yourself. Well, God knows if I break the law that, he, that I put up on myself, you're all going to pay for it. I am sicker than all get out, real quick. He says, but I want you to understand this. Anything that you eat, it's not about what you eat. And the more you study, it's about how much you eat. You can eat anything and lose weight. But the portion size is what we got to work on. Amen. The guy that's doing the McDonald's diet right now, he orders a quarter pounder, cuts it in half. Eats fries, cuts them in half. These I eat now, these I eat later. And he's losing weight. So we think, well, Lord, I want to lose weight. And the Lord says, it's not about the food that you eat. It's about how many times you got to go back to the table. And that's just a freebie. So then he goes on and says, but if it's unclean to you, don't eat it. But don't judge your brother because of it. If you eat pork, I'm not going to go, oh, pork, you shame on you, you're going to hell. No, because it's okay. You've asked God to bless it. Bless this food that we're about to partake. May it be beneficial to our bodies. Because you've asked it, it will be done. He says, if you consider it unclean, it is unclean. He says, but as you walk, walk in love. In other words, I'm not going to offend my brother if I know my brother is an alcoholic. And I've had people ask me this. When we do communion, it's grape juice. Well, why don't you use wine? Because some people are recovered alcoholics. They don't need to be tempted. Why are you trying to tempt your brother? He says, if you're going to walk in love and you know something is offensive to somebody, and I don't mean surface offensive, seriously offensive, don't do it. I knew of a pastor who believed that it was okay to drink wine. And he had a new convert, and they came to their house, and they had dinner with him, and he breaks out the wine, and they start pouring the wine, and, and they go, this is okay to drink? I thought we weren't supposed to drink. Oh, no, no, wine's okay. And he misled his brother. Three years later, the man and his wife got a divorce, lost his job. He became an alcoholic and destroyed their own family. And it started from the dinner with the pastor. He says, don't be a stumbling block for your brother. If you know things are wrong, don't do them. If you think they're shady, don't do them. I stay away from things because I know I don't want to get involved with them. People ask me all the time, well, is drinking wrong? Ask God. God's going to tell you. If you want to get closer to God, he's going to tell you that's wrong. Of course, you want to get it to God, he's going to say, other things are wrong. Your language is going to change. Your attitude is going to change. Your behavior has got to change. All those things have got to change because that's what it's part of. As we walk closer to God, we walk in love. Out of respect for others and for him. Do not destroy your brother by what you do. Don't let your habits destroy others. I watched a parent one time, had a beer in one hand, cigarette in the other, and he's telling his kid, I don't want to ever see you drink, and you better never smoke either. Right. Yeah, dad, and he walks away. And I looked at him and said, you're kidding me, right? right. 
He goes, what do you mean? I said, that's exactly what he's going to go do. Why? Because I told him no to. Goes, no, because that's exactly what you're doing. We learn by example. We lead by example. In Romans chapter 14, verse 16. Therefore, do not let good be spoken as evil or of evil. Do not let your good be spoken as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by man. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make uh, for peace and the things which by, or by which one may edify another. First thing he says, protect your good. Don't let others lead you into a place where you are thinking and they can say, well, he would do that kind of thing. Paul talks about the food. Christ talks about service, attitude, behavior, how you handle things. If you are okay to slide a, a dime off into your pocket because it's there and you think you can get away with it, you're already caught. God already saw you. I'm going to tell it myself. I was in Walmart and I bought a bunch of stuff and I paid for it. And I didn't want to carry it on. And I shoved it into a bag and I took off. I walk out the door and the Lord says, why did you steal that bag? I didn't steal no bag. You didn't pay for that bag. Fine. I'll go pay for it. I had to go back to that store, buy something else so I could ring up a bag and pay for it. Well, there you go, God. Better. Why? Because it's not about what other people see. It's about what he sees. I'm not standing before you on judgment. I'm standing before him. Amen. And I sure in the world don't want to miss heaven over a Walmart bag. No. Ten cents. No, thank you. Amen. The closer you get to God, the less he tolerates. Amen. He says, I want to show you. I want you to live that life. He says, so protect your good. Know that people say, no, they would never take anything because I know them. They would never lie. They would never say that because I know them. They don't talk about bad people. Then he says, kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, I need you to help me break this down. Here's what he said. Righteousness is towards God. When we live in righteousness, it is our actions towards the Father. I'm behaving, Lord, because my righteousness is before you. So all my righteousness is towards him. It's not about people. It's about him. Then he says, my, my righteousness is my attitude towards God. Peace is my attitude towards people. The peace is not about anything else but my attitude towards people. If I walk in peace with people, my attitude is in peace. I will not stir up messes or I will not cause trouble or I'm not going to talk about smack and, and gossip and everything else. It will be to bring peace everywhere I go. I don't need to be in your business because I'm a peace and I bring peace. It's my attitude towards people. I want you to understand this. People are a mess. They need Jesus. Amen? I'm a mess. I need Jesus. All the time. But my attitude towards him is righteousness. My attitude towards people is peace. Then he says, joy is the attitude towards myself. 
The joy in the Holy Spirit is the attitude towards me. I must be happy with me. Come on now. Come on. Y'all frowning out there. If I'm going to walk in peace, I'm going to have peace with people around me. If I'm going to walk in righteousness, I'm going to have righteousness between me and God. Everything's going to be good. A 10 cent Walmart bag was having problems. We need to get that taken care of so we're, we're lined up again. So our righteousness is good. Peace was that I have peace with everybody, even when a, a, a worker takes my truck and gets it stuck out in the field. <laughs> Buries it up to the axle. Well, it's there until spring now. Oh, well. You're not mad? No, it's at peace. It is what it is. Why worry about it? God will take care of it. Understanding that we have peace with one another as we work with each other, as we worship with each other, as we live with each other. We have peace. You walk into a house and there's no peace between a husband and wife. It's miserable. I don't know about these lights. They, they keep changing on us. Maybe the Holy Spirit is doing this. It's going to get real hot now. <laughs> because if it is so hot in your home because you are so irritated with each other, I had an aunt and uncle say, we never argue. Oh, no, they didn't. They never shared a, a nasty word to each other, but they would just quit talking. And the house was so thick you could walk through and cut it with a knife. And you're going, wow, I can't wait to get out of here. Why? Because the attitude wasn't right. There was no peace there. And when you don't have joy in your own life, you're miserable. You're unhappy. Nothing goes your way. You complain about all the things that's not going right. Why is God picking on you? Why doesn't people love me? Why can't things go my way? Why am I always having problems? You have no joy. And just remember, problems are part of life. The more you have, the more alive you are. Amen. Amen. I must be really alive because I got lots of problems. He says, you are alive in Jesus. Because you have joy in your heart. It's not about everything, all the problems. It's about giving God joy. Lord, thank you for making me alive. Thank you for touching me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for walking with me, Lord. Thank you that I got problems that you're going to take care of, Lord. He's going to take care of it all. The acceptable by God. When we live this way, it becomes acceptable by God. And it's approved by man. Why? Because you're just a good person. You're doing everything the Lord tells you to do. You're living by the law. You're living according to what God wants you to live by. You're doing all things right. That doesn't mean that you can't voice your opinion. It doesn't mean that you can't change things. It doesn't mean that you can't say, ask God for some diff something different. You can. But you do it respectfully and with joy, knowing that God's going to work it all out according to his purpose for your life. Then he says in Romans 14, verse 20, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for a man who eats with offense. It is not good neither to eat meat or drink wine, nor do anything but which, it, but which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. It is evil to do things that offend. Now, I'm not talking about that surf surface offensing that we have. Oh, that outfit offends me. Get over yourself. That's not what he's talking about. And I've watched people, oh, I don't like that hairdo. That offends me. Well, don't look. You know, if you don't like the shiny head, don't look. It is what it is. That's not what he's talking about. We have a lot of fake offenders out there. 
throughout the world. They're offended by this, they're offended by that. That's not what he's talking about. He said, if you're offending your brother into keeping him from serving the Lord. Now, when you said that dress offends me or that outfit offends me, you have just become the one who's offending your brother. They quit going to church because they don't want to offend nobody. You just offended your brother. You will be held accountable for offense, not them. That's what he's talking about. We're to love our brothers and sisters. Doesn't matter. Now, if you come to church and you're a young person, you got a tube top on and things hanging out and short shorts that the cheekies are showing, yeah, you're, somebody's going to say that's not appropriate. Amen? And if grandma comes in the dress the same way, we'd say that's not appropriate either. Doesn't matter who's wearing it, it's just not appropriate. That's not being offensive. That's just saying you, you need to change your, your dress because it's inappropriate. Right. Exactly, that's right. Offenses are when I say something out of my mouth and degrade you. That's what he's talking about. When you say something out of your heart that's offensive, when you put somebody down, I've told this story before. I used to tell jokes all the time. And the Lord told me one day, no more. We was out here playing baseball and, and we was cutting up and we was telling jokes and Brother Jesse and I was joking with each other and I got ready to leave and everybody's left and I lock up the gate and God says, no more can that come out of your mouth. Whoa. Yes, sir. No more shall you show jokes like that. That's inappropriate for you. Yes, sir. And I locked the gate. I called Jesse. said, Jesse, I'm sorry. For what? J joking with you like that. <laughs> no big deal. We was all doing it. Yeah, I can't do that no more. God got me bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Not a problem. It wasn't appropriate. See, there's things that change in your life because you're moving closer to God. I'm not talking about the sins in concrete. If you lie, that's a sin. If you say, well, I think I can not tell the whole truth and just kind of shade it, that's a lie. That's sin. But if you're trying to change things in the way you behave and the way you act, those you're going to walk through, God's going to work on you individually. Amen. Just like, you know, somebody says, well, I'm not sure if it's wrong to smoke. Ask God. For me, it is. For you, it may not be. I don't know. Ask God. I got news for you. He will tell you when it's wrong. You might not even ask, and he's going to tell you when it's wrong. Amen. Do not do anything that will cause your brother to stumble. Do not throw things out there. I used to laugh. Up in the church, we'd have these preachers come through, and they'd say, oh, if your hair is touching your collar, boys, you're going to hell. You need a haircut. And I'd let mine grow just, just to irritate them. <laughs> my dad goes, you can't do that. I was, Can I have it long, Dad? Not in my house. When I moved out, I let it grow as long as I could get it. Why? Because there was no issue with it. It wasn't about that. These preachers come and say, if you have a TV in your home, you're dying and going to hell. Okay? Now we got them in church. It wasn't about the TV. It wasn't about the hair. It was about the attitude. And sometimes religious people can get such a bad attitude you have to follow these rules, and if you don't, you're not going to make it. Only we are going into heaven. <clears throat> what a joke. The Bible says, all that have called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those are the ones that are going into heaven. It didn't say they all had to be clean first before they come to Jesus. It just says, come to Jesus. 
He'll do the cleaning. And when we quit judging others, he begins to clean us. Amen. It's letting all our religious thoughts and beliefs go away. Because it's not about our religious walk. It's about our personal walk with Jesus. God, where do you want me? Am I doing what is right according to your word? Because you know, I'll do crazy things. Well, Lord, we'll try it. God goes, no, I don't want that. Okay, we won't try it. But we have to be willing to say, Lord, what do you want us to do? Offend. Don't get caught up with the world's offenses. If you're not this, if you're not that, you offend me. We have so many offensive parties out there. Our government's trying to separate us by color, creed, religion. Just get out of the way. I'm not any other American than just an American. It's what I am. Born to Christ, saved by the blood of the Lamb. If you want to call me anything, I'm a Christian American. Amen. That's all there is. Amen. Christian first, American second. Amen. Whatever Christ asks, that's what I will do no matter what. Well, that offends me. Get over it. Amen. That's not the offense that we're talking about. We're talking about the offense when I come alongside and say, you can't do that. And make you stumble. Or if you don't do it this way, you're not going to make it. I had a lady pull up flying in the parking lot. I was standing outside the office. I thought she was going to run me over at first. She was barreling down in there. She locked up her brakes. And she's just bawling. Oh, what in the world happened? When I got, I said, ma'am, are you okay? She goes, I didn't talk to the preacher. I said, well, I'm, I'm the preacher. She goes, I just buried my baby. Four months old. And the priest told me my baby's going to hell because it wasn't baptized. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. I said, no, let, let's, let's, let me take you into the board. Here the word says, suffer the little children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. We have an age of accountability. When you realize what is right and wrong. And it's different for everybody. I've watched people that were 90 years old and would still be considered a child. Because they weren't there mentally. I've watched four-year-olds get saved and say, I know the difference between right and wrong. I know who Jesus is. And I said, your child did not go to purgatory or hell or any other place. That child went straight to the bosom of Abraham. Amen. Where Jesus is, the kingdom of God, heaven. And that child is now waiting for you to get there. Amen. Now you have to make the choice. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, have you accepted Jesus Christ? Because if you haven't, then there will be a separation. But if you do, you will see your child again. Amen. And she goes, are you sure? I am positive. Because that's what the word says. And we prayed and she goes, I am so glad that I stopped here. Amen. I said, so am I. Yes. I said, now go and serve the Lord. That's right. Amen. She goes, I will. And she left. Religious error. Dogma. I've watched people say, you've got to speak in tongues to make it to heaven. No, you don't. You've got to be baptized. No, you don't. The Bible says one thing is required to make it to heaven, that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. And it can be done quickly as, oh God, done. Because the next moment you're dead. Jesus says, that one's mine. He called upon me. Or we make our brother weak by putting so many burdens upon him 
you have to be at every service, you have to sing in the choir, you have to pay your tithes, you have to do this, you have to work on a Bible study, and you have to teach. If you don't do these things, you're not making it. Really? Overbearing. Weakening our brother. God doesn't want us to make our brothers weak. He wants us to encourage them and strengthen them. And I have one more verse, and I'm out of time. Very quickly. Romans 14, 22. Do you have faith? Have it put, or have it to put before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself. In what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned in his, if he eats because he does not eat in faith. And whatever he or whatever is not from faith is sin. In other words, if you're not praying over your food, you're not believing in faith. Thank you, Lord. For this meal. In America, we pray first. In Israel, they pray, pray last. And I asked them, I said, why do you guys pray at the end? Well, how can we give God thanks for something we haven't tried yet? Okay. Why do you pray first? Because we believe it's going to be good when we pray over it. Is there a right way or a wrong way? No. We're giving God praise for what he is doing. He says, have faith. Don't boast about it. Just live it. Do not condemn others. Do not condemn yourself. But make the right choices. If you doubt, you're already condemned. Quit doubting. I don't know how many people walk around saying, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Why? Well, because there's sin in my... Well, quit doubting and say, God, thank you for forgiving me of that sin and help me not to do it no more. Whatever is done in faith or without faith is sin. He tells us he wants us to go ahead and do the things that are right. Do not offend others. Live in righteousness towards God. Live with peace towards others. Live with joy within yourself. <coughs> Quit condemning yourself for things of the past. Amen. If you've asked God to forgive you, it's done. Don't let the devil go dredge up the river and pull out your junk. It's done. I am free. Live in joy. God set me free from all my mistakes. I am free. Are you free? Better live it. Live in peace. Some of us have such hard lives at home because we don't live in peace. We like to stir it up. I'm trying to be good. Quit stirring it up and live in peace. Live righteously before God because he's the one you're going to stand before. Now the key to your diet, eat whatever you want. Just eat less and give God praise. And watch what it changes in your life. Same way in your spiritual life. Just go to the table of the Lord. More often. Amen. Eat less. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to take this. I'm going to dwell on this for a while. Amen. So I can come and live strength and be blessed. Everybody stand. If you're ready to live with peace with others, joy in your own heart, say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Does it matter? Joy does not have circumstances to give it. Joy just comes from the Father. Are you living without complaint before God in righteousness? If that's you, I want you to pray with me. Lord, I need more righteousness in you. Lord, I need more peace around people with me. Lord, I need more joy in my life. I ask you, Lord, this day, heal me 
deliver me, set me free. Let me eat whatever I want and still lose weight according to your word. Just let me don't eat the whole thing. Help me with self-control, O Lord, both physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially. Give me self-control and let that fruit grow in me. In Jesus' name. Now, right now, some of you need to really do some healing. You need to forgive those that have brought you turmoil and took away your peace. You need to ask God for that forgiveness for the things that you've been doing that you know that are wrong. And you need to accept the joy that God wants to give you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God, we thank you, Father. Lord, we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive your righteousness. Lord, I receive your peace. And Lord, I receive your joy. In Jesus' name. Before you sit down, I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. I want to thank you all for watching online. I hope to join you next week. And when you can come by, we'd be glad to have you. God bless you.